Okay, we're still talking about the rational zeros theorem, and I'm going to use this example to go over a little bit more theory here. 3x plus 2 times 2x minus 5 times x minus 2. Well, if we multiply all of this out, this will be a polynomial. And we will multiply it all out in just a minute, but it's fir first, when it's in factored form like this, it's easy to look at the factors and see what the zeros are. And in this case, the zeros are, well, this one's easy. Obviously, x equals 2 is a 0, and this one here, too, if x is 2 and a half, or 5 halves, if you put in 5 halves right there, that factor will be 0. And then over here, to make that factor 0, you need x equals negative 2 thirds. And the order, the order there isn't critical, but those are the three zeros. Now, watch what happens to the numbers as we multiply this out. I'm going to start by doing a FOIL here, 3x minus 2 times 2x minus 5. So we get 6x squared, and then my outer is minus 15x, and the inner, ter inner two terms are plus 4x, so that gives me minus 11x, and then this is minus 10. And that needs to be multiplied by my x minus 2 over here. So I'll multiply the x by all three of those terms. So that gives me a 6x six, six cubed minus 11x squared minus 10x. And then multiply the minus 2 by all of those terms. That gives me a minus 12x squared plus 22x plus 20. And we can combine some terms here. We've got 6x cubed, and then, let's see, minus 11x squared and minus 12x squared gives me a minus 23x squared. And then I have a minus 10x and plus 22x. That gives me a plus 12x, and then I have the plus 20 on the end. Now, look at these numbers here. Look at this 6. Where did the 6 come from? Well, it came from right here. So that 6 came from right up above, and that 6 came from right there. And that 6 right there came from that 3 and that 2 being multiplied together. Excuse me, that 3 and that 2. Those multiplied to give me that 6. Now look at this 20 down here. Where did the 20 come from? Well, it came from right there. Well, where did that 20 come from? It came from this negative 10 and this negative 2 over here. And where did those come from? Well, this 2 came from right there, and this 10 came from that 5 and that 2. Now, I'm going to take note of those facts, and I'll take note of them like this. I'll ask this in the form of questions. Where did the 6 come from, and where did the 20 come from? And the 6 came from this 3 and this 2, and this 1 coefficient right there. So I'm going to write, where did the 6 come from? 3 times 2 times 1. And where did the 20 come from? The 20 came from this 2 and that 5 and that 2. So I'm, I'm going to say 2 times 5 times 2. Now look again. Where did the, um, the 6 come from? These numbers right here, 3 and 2 and 1, those are the denominators of these zeros. Okay, you see right here? This 3 and this 2 and this 1 right there. The denominators of the zeros gave us that 6 right there. And the 20 over here, where did the 20 come from? This 2 and this 5 and this 2. Look up here. 2, 5, and 2. The numerators of those zeros gave us that 20, that 20 right there on the end. And what I hope you see from this example and all the arrows that I've drawn on the screen here is that that was not an accident. That will work out that way every time. This number here, the constant term, is always made from multiplying the numerators of the zeros together. And this number here, the lead coefficient, is always made from multiplying the denominators together. So I'll say that like this. If we need to factor something like this, 6x cubed minus 23x squared plus 12x plus 20, a good place to look for the zeros of this polynomial would be the numbers 
in the list formed by taking factors of 20 divided by factors of 6. And that is the rational zeros theorem. The rational zeros theorem says that if this polynomial has any factors at all that are rational numbers, they will be in the list of numbers created by doing this, taking factors of the constant term and dividing by factors of the lead coefficient.